Hi everybody, this is Fran Spielman and we're in the Sun-Times newsroom with the latest entry into the mayor's race, Susana Mendoza. Hi Fran. Welcome. Thanks, thanks for having me. You were making calls to people, fundraising calls, days after Rahm Emanuel dropped out. So why then didn't you be honest with the voters at that point? I'll tell you what, I was fielding a lot of calls. My phone was off the hook. I was getting lots of people who were calling me and asking me to consider running for mayor. And I was honest with them and I told them that it focused on my race for controller. And large part is because I was a statewide uh, contender. I mean, first of all, I love my job as controller. It's been the greatest privilege of my life so far. Uh, I've been leading the resistance against Bruce Rauner for the last two years. And I was campaigning incredibly hard across the entire state, not just for myself, right, but, but for our whole ticket. Is, well, vote. you're asking me the question, right? Okay. So I'm going to answer it honestly. I've been campaigning very strongly across the whole state. If you would have looked at my calendar in those days and up until the last week or so, you'd see that most of my time, 80 to 90 percent of my time, was spent outside of Chicago. So nothing changed for me. I was fully focused on my race and I kept that. And I was honest to the extent that I said that if Governor Rauner got reelected, Fran, there's no way I would have considered running for mayor. So he didn't get reelected. Now he is And you gone. knew he wouldn't anyway. Well, I was hoping he wouldn't. I was working very hard the to make sure he were didn't. landslide They are, predicting. but we've been surprised before, right? So I always think when you put the cart before the horse, you're making a mistake. So first thing was first. We had to get past November 6th. Right. So I now you're here. totally honest about that. And people are pummeling you for this, the lack of trust with the voters, the lack of on integrity and honesty. And one of the people who's doing I don't, that I is don't, Bill yeah. Daly, whose brother did the same thing in 89. So do you find a little bit of irony there, or 88 rather? I think people, people may see the irony in that, but you know. What I, irony do you see? Well, number one, I guess the, to answer your question, it's that uh, his brother did the exact same thing, and he was the chairman of that campaign, right? So, but at the end of the day, like, I don't have time to worry or even think about the dailies or anybody else. Like, the reality of it is I'm focused on Chicago's future, and that's why I'm running. Well, but one thing they are saying about you is yes. that you're going to be Rahm's third term. <laughs> now, what do you think of that charge? And if you're not Rahm's third term, how do you differ with him? Well, I'm not Rahm Emanuel. I'm Susana Mendoza, and I've had to always uh, fight for every position that I've ever had and earn the support from the voters. That's how I got and elected he to hasn't? office. Well, I'm not comparing myself to Ron because I'm not Ron, and nobody else should compare Okay, but me to let's Ron. talk about his yeah. decision making. Tell me, tell Are me. there some things that you would do differently? Would you yes. close 50 schools? No. And, I, and why not? Because I think the last thing you should look to do is close schools, and if you had to get to that point, it should be in full collaboration with the people that are most impacted the teachers, the parents, the children, because schools aren't just bricks and mortars. They're like the anchors and the heart and soul of a community. So I would have gone about that entirely different than the mayor did. And another point right there, well, let's talk about teachers. I would not have, like the mayor did, uh, taken away their pay raises just a few weeks after taking office. I think the, the way in which he started and pretty much his entire relationship with the Chicago Teachers Union was not a good way to start off the term and I think that in large part led to what we saw which was the big strike yeah so you think he provoked good. that strike I think yeah I think you know his inability to uh, to ever want to just really work that out with them to have good honest uh, conversations with them or just even try to be a little bit friendly with them it didn't work out and so you don't need necessarily I'm not saying that you you give everyone everything they want but you certainly give people respect the night of the election yeah you got up there and you danced all over Bruce Rauner's grave. He had already conceded. Why, why did you feel the need to do that? Some people thought that was a little bit too shrill. Well, I feel that, um, you know, for the last you wish two you years... Hadn't? Did you go I don't, a little far? I wouldn't say that I wish I hadn't, but I would say that, um, you know, I'm not thinking about Bruce Rauner anymore. That no, night, I, know, but I was that still night, thinking about Bruce Rauner. Did you like what you said did, when you looked at it? Here's did what I'm going to tell you. That night, I was very happy that the destruction that this man has inflicted upon the state for the last two years was ending. Thank you, thank you for re-electing me as your truth-telling fiscal watchdog who was not afraid to stand up to the biggest bully in this state, Bruce Rauner. Yeah, that's awesome. Hey, look, you all know that I've been fighting out of my weight class every day since getting elected, taking on this guy. But as I've said many times, the only thing better than taking on Bruce Rauner all the time is... Beating Bruce Rauner! Beating Bruce Rauner every single time! Yes, we did it! 
he's still governor for the next you know few months uh, but yes I was very happy and I could have of course just pretended that those two years didn't happen and you know just be super gracious in my speech about you know how we're gonna have kumbaya and move forward but I've always been honest with the people as to what my feelings are and some people may like that, other may, people may find it shrill. I would say it was honest, and it was an honest assessment of what he's done and a reminder to folks of what we were celebrating that night. Red light and speed cameras, would you have done that? Again, not the way it was rolled out. I think it was, there was, they were not honest on why those uh, cameras were brought to the first place. And that was because it was a revenue generator. Let's be honest about would that. Would you keep I think them? that's how people say. I think you could keep some of those cameras in the areas that they're really needed for safety, but I would look at revisiting that whole operation and see where we actually need them and where it's just, you know, a focus on, on money. Because people already feel nickel and dimed as it is in Chicago. O'Hare Express, would you pursue it? Elon Musk. I, you know, I don't know much as, I know about as much about that project as you do. I mean, there's I can't make a definitive statement as to whether I would or wouldn't. I don't really know any of the details. Well, about you that might project. be handed a contract with Elon well, Musk. Well, when I you? become mayor, then I'm going to look at all of those things, revisit all of the contracts that are pending still with the city of Chicago, because it's about reprioritizing how we spend our tax dollars. Closing mental health clinics. Would you have done I'm that? I'm totally opposed to closing mental health clinics. We need more mental health clinics, and we need to destigmatize mental health. You know, I mean, people oftentimes don't seek the services even if they were available because there's a stigma attached to that and you know mental health needs to be treated in the same way as you would be treating um, cardiovascular health or any kind of physical health um, would you reopen the six clinics I would that really closed? want to do that yes I don't know that I would reopen those six exact clinics but I would be looking to provide much greater uh, breadth of mental health you services would reopen across, some across of them. The, yes I mean again I don't I'm not talking about I want to be clear not necessarily a physical address, right. but we definitely need uh, widespread mental health services across Chicago. Yeah. Okay. Now you talk about being a new generation leader. Yeah. If you are a new generation leader, is Ed Burke your finance chairman? He's not. As a matter of fact, Ed Burke is supporting a different candidate for mayor, Gary I Chico, know. Would so. he be your finance chairman? or would you? Why would that? Oh, you mean uh, for the finance chairman if you of the city mayor. council? I'm going to look to revisit all chairmanships. Right, but I mean, is he the kind of new generation leader you want? Here, well, here's what I tell you. We don't know if Chairman Burke is going to get reelected, right? So again, Do you think he won't? I don't know. That's We'll let the voters decide that, Fran. Well, but he I represented Trump. Was that an board. insult to his community? I don't think he should have represented Trump, and I do think it was an insult to his community. Why? Yes, I do. Because Why? Trump is uh, an absolute, um, you know, he is racist. He is a bigot. He is someone who makes his... Um, popularity off of demeaning people. He calls Mexicans uh, rapists and murderers. And my father was a Mexican immigrant, as was my mother. And I take personal offense to anyone who would say that hardworking immigrants are rapists and murderers so as by their first thought. representing so yes, him, he should have what? He put the dollar ahead of? I believe that Chairman Burke should not have represented Donald Trump. It was a huge mistake. And, you know, I think he's in trouble don't now forget, because don't of forget it? that. So the billion dollar spike in pension payments is going to slap the the next mayor and city council in the face. What is your plan to deal with that? Yeah. Well, I've got to get in there first and see what our numbers look like and all the other options that we have available. What I can tell you is that for the last two years, I've been uh, managing the state through the worst fiscal crisis. So in terms of, I have a, a very keen understanding of the challenges that we're facing both at Chicago and the state. Now, I can tell you what the numbers look like on the state side because I deal with well, it every day. But but you, you're a candidate for mayor now. What are right. your ideas? I've been a candidate for mayor for one day, Fran. I understand. Yeah, but we're going to be talking this, about his ideas as watched the campaign moves along. these headlines. Yep. Would you raise property taxes? Would you raise the water and sewer tax again? The telephone tax again? Would you turn to other new sources? What? Tell us what your ideas are. That's the point. Is I want to get in there and pull the curtains back because you don't even know how this city manages the finances nor do taxpayers we didn't know how they were managing them on a state level and now you do because of the transparency reforms that we put in place okay let me yeah. go through a couple of ideas for you sure. casino gambling would I'm you, for casino gambling where where do you want I would it? love to see where a casino in Chicago and where? I would like to use those revenues Fran it's my first day on the job I and not even on the job but well, as a mayor of the candidate. city I so, mean uh, what, what I, else, I would you those want are, it downtown? Those, are, those are decisions that we would face and look at as mayor Okay, but so I do casino, believe that yes. we should uh, we video should gaming. Revenues. It's it's really uh, you know, in the I'm a, th there's um there's uh 
there's pros and cons to that as well. You know, I mean, video gaming again exists; it's a legal thing. So where we not could, in Chicago? No, it isn't. But in the state, it is. So yes. the state Would has you, seen should some, Chicago. So take here's it in. the thing: I want to look at that a little bit closer because in some areas it's been doing really well, and in other areas they're looking to rescind it. So you know, again, these are issues that sometimes we're quick to move to them, but then we find out that there might be some unintended consequences. So it's too early for me to tell you that. Yes, for sure, I would like get behind uh, video gaming here in Chicago, but it, it should be on the table. Yeah. City income tax. I'm not for city income tax. No. Because? I just don't think it works. I, I don't like what's happening in other cities that have a city income tax. And by the way, people feel overtaxed as it is already. So I know what that's like. Uh, downtown congestion fee. Uh, I, you know what, Fran? Uh, again, I've got to wait to be mayor to figure out what all my options are. And I'm telling you that there are potentially a lot and there might not be very many. So. But you're not coming to the table with any ideas of your own. No, that's not necessarily true. I mean, why well, would you say that? Well, then toss out a few. I'm not going to get into specifics on a proposal for fees or anything like that. I want to avoid fees as much as possible. In fact, your, yeah. your announcement talks about the property taxes are too high. I, they are too How high. Are you Do you disagree? Them? How are you going to lower them well, number when one, you have these looming pen pension so payments? As you know, because the state does not carry its fair share of the weight in funding education, of which I have been a, a champion. I mean, I fought very hard to get better funding for education across, uh, I should say, for schools across Illinois. Um, we need to do a better job of funding education so that municipalities don't have to rely so heavily on property taxes. We're going to continue to fight that good fight. Now we have a governor who actually wants to you know, move things like education funding forward. You mentioned safe neighborhoods as uh -huh. one of your tenants. We're wrapping up the hiring of 970 police officers. Is that enough? Uh, here's the deal. I think we need more detectives. I mean, that is just common sense. We've got, uh, you know, when when we're not closing out these cases, uh, one the crime that goes rate, yeah, one crime that goes unsolved becomes three crimes that could balloon to ten crimes. Uh, that's in large part a reason why we're seeing. Um, violence spike as well in the Chicago Police Department. So we need more detectives so they can actually focus on closing these cases out and, you know, making sure that those crimes don't continue, continue to um, exponentially grow. How many more? We also, I don't know the number of that. So I'm looking forward to, you know, sitting down with the experts and figuring out what our needs are. But I can tell you that a 17% clearance rate means we need more detectives and we have to be honest about that conversation. You and have police officers in your family. One, yes, my brother. Oh, your brother, okay. Yeah. What does he tell you about what the state of morale is, particularly after the consent decree sure. is now pending? Is it rock bottom? What do you do about it? Well, obviously, I don't think it's a secret that the state of morale is low, but I also believe that the consent decree needs to be implemented. And so the next mayor has to really focus on that. Police reform is a huge issue, and it needs to happen. Um, but at the same time, like I said, that's getting to the symptom of the problem where we d need to get to the root of the problem itself. And that means more investment in human capital. It means investing in things like after school programs and mentorship programs, Mayor's job doing training. That. His not enough, is not enough. I mean, this is where, like, you know, kids feel that they don't have other resources. And I can tell you because I was a kid who was afraid to walk to school. This is many years ago. And I, well, you know what I was thinking about when I was in school, Fran? I was thinking about the walk back home from school. I wasn't even thinking about what I was learning that day. I was thinking about that walk back home and how scary that was going to be. And that continues to be the case today. How would yeah. you rebuild the south and west side neighborhoods that still look like war zones, some of them? That's right. That's right. How by would you by do focusing it? on them. Look, I think that the last few mayors have really focused the great part, the greatest part of their attention on the downtown. The downtown's gorgeous, it's beautiful, but that has not resonated at all. That's not what people feel like in the neighborhoods. And that's the real Chicago. Look, the downtown is the economic engine of our city, but the neighborhoods are the heart and soul. So of what our city. would you do? We'd look to, you know, first of all, invest in them. Like I said, I mean, it's not okay to live on the south or the west side and not have a grocery store within walking or riding your bike distance. That's not okay. Food deserts are all over the place on the He's south and the west side. He's very much tried to make that a uh, priority. Well, again, Fran, you know what? I am not going to compare my ability to get things done to any other mayors. Like, I am my own person. I'll be okay, my own but mayor. But you're saying it's fallen short. Even it has. It has. And I think he'd say it's fallen short. But He's been on the horn to these grocery store chains all the time. Yep. He's tried. Well, I'm going to try harder. Would you keep Eddie Johnson? 
Um, I would be looking to make changes all over the place. So you don't want to keep I mean, him, no. I, I'm not going to tell you I'm not keeping him right away or that you know this is on the chopping block or whatever, but I'm telling you that I would be looking to run my own administration with my own choices with no for those key positions. With no holdovers from Ron. Do you want me to fire everybody on the first day, Fran? Well, no, but that, <laughs> that's that, not traditionally, realistic, right? Traditionally, yes. a mayor comes in with a new cabinet. Well, I'm going to come in as a new mayor, and that means new things happening for Chicago. And new people. All it, of them. It, there's going to be a lot of new people. I think that's the first all thing to them? say. Fran, I would never tell you that all new people are coming in. I don't think any mayor should tell you that they're going to fire every employee in the city of Chicago. That no. would be absurd. Janice Jackson, would you keep her? I think her? Janice Jackson's doing a great job. But you know what I do? I would also consult with parents and teachers and all kinds of folks who have a say in the direction of the Chicago Public Schools. What That's what I want to do. What would you do about the half-empty high schools and other elementary schools on the south and west side? You, you sure. criticize the mayor for the 50 closings, but you'll have to close more, won't you? I would never think about closing a school without fully taking into account uh, the needs and the thoughts of the s teachers, the parents, and the children who are going to be impacted by that. And, and I don't think we should close that NTA. I don't. Oh, the NTA, you, you yeah, would reverse that? Yeah, absolutely. Why, Why there? Because I, I think that they're performing really well. There's no need for that other than we're shuffling people around to take care of other groups of, of, of folks that, you know, might not need uh, those changes. I think the NTA, the mayor needs to support that school, and I would put a two-year moratorium on closing any schools once elected at least. We just got done with a five-year moratorium. Well, I, there would be a two-year to start with with me. But they're hemorrhaging students. Fran. You cannot just be in the business of closing schools. Remember, they are the anchors and the lifeblood of neighborhoods. So I'm not for that. You know, other people may have done that. You, I'm so not you going keep to do a, that. open half-empty buildings or I'm going to figure out how we either how we work first and foremost with the local school with the local school boards, with the parents, with the teachers, with the Chicago Teachers Union as well. You know, I look forward to an elected school board that will actually hold mayors accountable because transparency, which would come with that, is going to breed accountability, and that's a good thing. I mean, Chicago should be more democratic when it comes to how we're running our city. Fully elected, with with not not a half an elected and half, school board, not a hybrid. You know, I'm not necessarily opposed to a hybrid, but I believe that a, an elected school board is something I would support as well. Fully, but however you want to look about it. Every yeah. single yeah, board whatever member. is best for our city. I think democracy is a good thing. So people should have voices in how their school system is run. And the mayor, I think, with like I said, my I have my own son. There's no greater treasure or po point of pride for me than our son. Lead service lines is another huge problem. Uh -huh. The mayor recently admitted that 20 percent of the homes with meters tested positive for for excessive lead levels mm -hmm. should those replacement replacing those lead service lines be the city's responsibility we have a priority to protect our children and yes they should so yes. the city should take responsibility to replace those, are those our lines. lines we need to replace them so, and i and know it's going to cost billion money dollars. i'm not going to put a price tag on children's health it's really that simple so you think that should be the city's responsibility will, we'll how would you pay out, for it we'll figure out how to do that fran but i am not going to let children die because of lead poisoning or stunt their developmental growth because of lead poisoning and any mayor who tells you that that's okay shouldn't be mayor so look lead poisoning is a real issue no child. Do you think no the city should, should have be. been forthright with that res those results much sooner they than may, they get? I don't know exactly when they heard them, but yes, this is an issue that we need to tackle. And I really don't feel like putting a price tag on children's health. I'm a mom. Let's talk about yeah. uh, Tony Preckwinkle. She's off to a bit of a rocky start. She's had to fire her chief of staff, her security chief. She's standing by Berrios. Uh, you, the chief of staff thing where she supposedly knew months ago. What do you say about that? What does that say about her? Look, you know, I mean, she's got to deal with her own campaign and her own decisions. I mean, as a woman, you know, I think that that was, I was pretty horrified by that. And as a woman, especially who's been fighting the issue of sexual harassment for the last year of my life and trying to do the best to elevate women, not just into politics, but into safe work environments. Um, but, you know, You'd have to ask her. Another thing that you're going to inherit is a recycling rate of 9%. What should be done about that? That's a ridiculously low, worst in the nation number. Well, we have to do better. So I guess you're telling me there's a lot of low-hanging fruit here that the next mayor can see. Well, I don't know. Into. But, I mean, do you take it in-house? Do you stop doing it? Do you give know. up the ghost? I, I don't do know the answer it? to that. I think I'll look into it, and then we'll figure out what the best option and the, the most effective and 
uh, less expensive option is as well for the city. I mean, you know, I did that with city stickers, right? We transformed a 105-year-old program in four years. I'd just like to say for the record that it took a woman to get that done. I did in four years what 105 years worth of men couldn't do. But the cool thing about that is that we were able to eliminate the lines at City Hall. But it also got too punitive, too. Yeah, and I agree with that, and I would change that as mayor. I'd what make would sure you change? That well, first of all, I'd give an amnesty to folks who, who you know, got caught up in this whole system of not being able to pay the sticker because they obviously couldn't afford it. That was never the intention of those um, sticker, uh, what do you call it, the tickets going up, right? The intention was to make sure that people that we knew were knowingly skirting the law had a disincentive to do that. The target closings? What would you do about I'm that? I'm totally opposed to that. I think it's terrible. I don't think that they should... Um, that the aldermen should what approve would you do about it? any financial funding for them on the north side. They That's not right. Have. They, they shouldn't. Have. They should revoke it if they can. I don't what do you know mean? what the possibilities legally are. I, you know what? I think this is about we're, we're fighting for the future of the city and the way we want to see it. And I don't think it's okay. First of all, I think people should not do a single dollar's worth of shopping at Target's during this holiday season. Uh, you know, it's not okay. And if you look at what they've done nationally too, Fran, They've really kind of closed a lot of their stores in neighborhoods that are primarily African American and Hispanic. That says a lot about who they are as a moral, you know, um, a civic partner. Uh, and I'm not okay with that. I'm done shopping at Target myself. I would encourage Chicagoans to, you know, protest through their wallet and not do any shopping at Target. They're not a good neighbor of ours. And I, you know, do not feel comfortable with them opening new stores on the north side if they don't want to be a Target for all Chicagoans. Let's remind them, they're not Target, they're Target. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, Susanna. You got it. Thanks for having me.